lift you up, oh God, this morning because you are the king of our hearts. You are the mountain, oh God, where we run. The fountain we drink from. You are good, Father. Always good. Oh, so good. And we love you this morning. We honor you this morning. We've come to worship you this morning. King of glory.
so good. There's no God like our God. No God loves his people like our God. We have a relationship with God with you. We can come before you and sing praise unto your name. We can come before you and cry, you Lord of all, because you reign. You reign, oh God. Reign in this place, Jesus. Reign in our hearts, God. Reign in this church, Lord. Reign in the city, Jesus. Reign, oh God, reign. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. We hail you as King. Let's sing the song together. Oh, we crown you, Lord.
King, our Redeemer, our Lord. You may be seated. Good morning, everybody. This is such a beautiful, sunny morning to praise our God. Look at creation and say how awesome our God is. I just want to welcome you all here this morning, and in particular, I'd love to welcome anyone who's visiting us for the first time. We just love to welcome you especially, and we have a gift for you. So if this is your first time in Calvary, would you identify yourself by putting your hand up so that our ushers can come and give you a gift? Just keep it up until the usher comes. Um, we're also giving you a card. Um, on that, you can write down any prayer requests, your contact information. We want to pray for you during the week. Pray God's blessing and for any prayer needs that you might have. And thank you once again for coming and checking us out. I have a, a few announcements I'd like to draw your attention to. Uh, first of all, this coming Friday is the last Friday of the month. And on the last Friday of the month, it is just worship. We come and we give God glory and praise and we just worship him. And I just want to encourage you all to come. It's always a very special time and we never know what the Holy Spirit is going to do during that time. So do remember that time. Um, this afternoon, during second service, we have some training on how to pray for someone else. Um, you know, there are some good things to do and some not so good things to do. Uh, if you have not taken that training, I encourage you to stay. It's in the youth room during second service. Uh, next Sunday, we're having an information session for anybody who would like to be involved in leading a Lord's Supper group or a grow group or hosting one in their home. Um, if you are interested in that, just come and find out more information. You can sign up at the grow group table. There's an insert there. Uh, the last couple of weeks, I've been telling you the great news that Gary Chapman is coming to Calvary to do a marriage conference. Um, he is probably one of the best speakers that there is out there. And we get special opportunity to get tickets before they're released everywhere else. So they are available for sale after the service in the bookstore for $20. And I encourage you to get one before they're all sold out. And for any other notices, please check your bulletin. And by the way, the conference is for everyone, both single, married, and in between. Yeah, I, I said that. Uh, Crystal and James, they are engaged. Where are you? Uh, are they here? Come on in, come on in. Let's celebrate to and pray for you. Engagement bells are ringing. Congratulations. God bless you. You're doing the right thing. You, you don't just take somebody's daughter and run off. You do the right thing. You give engagement. You talk to the parents. You get counseling. You get, then you get married. And then you take your wife home. That's the way to do it. And God bless you for doing that. Stretch your hands and let's bless them. Father, we thank you. You call us, oh God, to be a light in darkness. And we thank you for this couple. Uh, they want to please you with their relationships. Thank you for the engagement as they plan to go ahead in marriage. May your hand be upon them. Guide them every step of the way. We thank you. May you honor them in this huge step that they have taken. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. We love you. Congratulations. Amen. All right. We want to release the children. Children, go to the upper room. God bless you. And I want us to do something in the next 20 seconds as the children leave. I want you to find a total stranger in the next 10, 15 minutes, uh, 15 seconds. Unless a stranger is your husband or wife, 
I don't want to talk to anybody you don't know. Look around quickly. Stand up, everybody. Find a total stranger and say hello. And introduce yourself. Just for 15 seconds, all right? I say not your wife or husband. They are not strangers, all right? I know sometimes they feel like strangers, but... All right, 10 seconds. You have five more seconds. Total strangers. All right. Five seconds. All right, that's it. Make sure you speak to them at the end of the service. Say, stranger, I would like to talk to you more. This is just a 20-second break. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. 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 So you see, it is not that awkward to meet a stranger. The Bible says the person that God has called us to love, love your neighbor. The parable of the good Samaritan is simply this. Your neighbor that God has called you to love is a stranger. When you love people whom you know, you are not truly loving. You actually begin to love when you love other people that are strange to you. Total strangers. So make sure at the end of the service, don't just gather around your cliques and your people. Find a total stranger and do the right thing. God bless you for that. Today we're going to continue our series on spiritual growth. We are on the ninth day of our 40 day of fasting and prayer. Oh, I got a few applause from a few people. Those of you who are not fasting, you are not clapping. You are not clapping. We still have 31 more days to go. The bus is still moving. You can still hop in. Nobody can tell whether you have begun in the beginning or not. Turn to your neighbor and say, hop in, hop in. 31 days to go. God said to me this morning, he's going to do some powerful, mighty things at the end of this fast. And I don't want you to miss it. And let me encourage you, everybody, at least, come here one evening this week to pray. We are praying every evening and we are here. I am here every evening to pray. If you can't make it all, that's okay. But at least make it once, twice, three times and watch God do the rest. Mm, don't let this opportunity pass by. He's going to move, shake things, and open doors for you. I believe so. Watch what God is going to do at the end of this 40-day fast. This is what we have done so far. We started with what is spiritual growth. Then we moved to principles of growth. Then we've spoken about five levels of growth to determine where you are in your walk. We spoke about growing in the spirit, how to grow. Five ways to measure your growth. And then last Sunday, we talked about growth killers. I want us to move on and more in a more practical way. How do we actually grow? We've spoken about things that will kill you. What about the things that will make you healthy, vibrant, spiritual field believer? That's what I'll be doing in the next four weeks, focusing on what helps us to actually grow as believers. As you know, different things that we, we need are going to help us. So today, I'm going to focus on some of the things that we need to help us grow. Every plant needs certain things. It needs, I believe it needs water. It needs air. It needs light. It needs the right temperature. Those are the four important things every plant needs in order to grow. And the same applies in the spiritual realm. You need water, which is the word of God. You need air, which is prayer. You need nutrients, which are the people of God sitting by you. You need the right heat, the right temperature, which is the Holy Spirit. We talked about growing in the spirit, keeping the fire of the Holy Spirit alive in your life. The right keeping you burning that will help you in your growth with God. Today, we are going to talk about the aspect that we need, the air that we breathe. The air that you need, which I call prayer. So I'm going to focus on growing through prayer. How do you grow through prayer? I'm going to make it as simple as possible because obviously if you haven't read our book 
on what when God's people pray, you are in the minority. All right? Make sure that you get a copy. Everything I'm going to say is going to be summarized in this book, When God's People Pray. This book is a result of a series I did on prayer. And um, in fact, last week, last week and a half, there are a group of ladies who came to the church and said, our church in Coquitlam, and we've started doing our studies on your book on prayer, and we've seen some results. And I wanted to make sure that you grab a copy. And today I'm only going to scratch the surface of this subject of prayer, keeping it very simple. Are you ready? So we're going to look at three aspects of it. Pull out your notes from your bulletin. We are going to look at the meaning of prayer, the motive of prayer. Why do we pray? And the methods. How do we pray? So we are going to look at the de definition, meaning. We are going to look at the motive, why. And the third one, the, the method, how to do it. So very simple subject and come with me. I want to speak to some people who are just new in Christ. And those of you who are giants, just to stir you up and keep doing what you are doing. Are we ready? Let's start with the meaning. What is prayer? Prayer can be defined in various ways. And I want to define it by using two words. The first word I want to use to define prayer is access. Prayer is when we actually connect with God. And when you connect with God, you have access to everything that is available with God. God created us to have connection with him, to have relationship with him. And until you are connected with God, there's going to be a deep sense of dissatisfaction in your soul. Prayer is where God has created the medium by which our spirit can connect with the almighty God and be fulfilled, be loved by him, and to be connected to him. And by the, by the process, you also are connected to all the heavenly inheritance. The blessings and the open doors are just the icing on the cake. The most important thing is to connect with your creator, and there is nothing like it. David describes it as a way that there's nothing than being in the presence of God. Prayer, I believe, is our most important duty as human beings. Say, so first of all, you should love the Lord your God with all your mind and all your soul and all your might. This is why we live. This is what we breathe. Prayer should be like unto you like oxygen. You breathe in prayer every day. And that's how you are going to be fulfilled and move on in life. We have access. Hebrews chapter 10 says, Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter. Somebody say to enter. We have access. So enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. By a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil. We have access. Before, only few people had access to the holiest of holy, to the throne of God. It was heavily guarded, can only be, be accessed once every year on the Day of Atonement. But the Bible says now that by his flesh and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Believe, having our hearts sprinkled from evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Go in because God has taken care of everything else. You are clean, you are washed, you have been sanctified. He has redeemed you. He has made a way. So go in. Prayer is when I have access to my daddy. When I got to knock on the doors of my daddy. It's like your children, right? Everybody else, when they come into your house, they must knock. Even more so, they don't even think of coming to your, your bedroom. But your children have unlimited access. They don't knock, they just come in. And when the, you are surprised, they are surprised that you are surprised. Like you are changing, your kid just walk in like nobody's business. And she, she may be standing there and talking to you and you're like, um, can't you give me some privacy? Why? They have access. Children have access. And the Bible says we call him Abba Father. Anywhere, any moment, at any time, you can call his name and he is going to be there. The second word I want to use to define prayer is what I call authority. Not only does prayer give us access, prayer also gives us authority. What kind of authority? Luke chapter 9 verse 1 says, Then he called 
his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. Prayer is where I exercise my authority over principalities. Oh, somebody is not here with me. Over principalities and over powers. Prayer is where I exercise authority. In this particular case, I'm not talking to God. I am speaking to demons. Prayer is not just connecting with God. Prayer is also exercising authority over principalities and sicknesses. What that also means is that sometimes you may feel the spirit of depression over your life. And it happens. And I experience it sometimes. Or the spirit of anxiety coming over you. From nowhere. Sometimes you find, you feel a wind blowing over your spirit. The Bible calls it the spirit of oppression. Or the spirit of heaviness. Oh, how many of you know what I'm talking about? Sometimes you just feel heavy. Or your room is heavy. Your environment is heavy. This is why authority comes in. The Bible says, whatever you shall bind here on earth shall be bound in heaven. God said, I give you. In other words, you don't even need to go through me to get this thing done. You have the authority. It's no more, oh God, help me deal with you. No, no. God said, I give you authority. You can speak to a situation. You can tear the spirit of depression. Depression, you have come to the wrong address. I command you in the mighty name of Jesus, darkness, leave my life. Darkness, leave my house. In other words, sometimes when your children come to you and they tell you they are feeling depressed, you have to remember you have authority. Before you tell that child to grab that medication, say, son, can I pray for you first? Because there's a place I read that says, I give you authority over diseases and sicknesses. Look, do you know you have authority? So why are you not exercising it? Prayer gives me access and prayer also gives me authority. I can speak to situation. Oh, I like what he said in Mark chapter 11. Watch this. I'm talking about authority. I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain. That's authority. Child of God, do you know what you carry? Prayer gives you that authority to say unto this mountain. What is a mountain? Mountain is a situation. Some mountain is something that is tormenting you. Something that, mountain is something that is blocking you. Something that is stopping your progress. Something that is not making you go forward. You can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and be thrown into the sea. And it will happen. Why? You have authority. You see, the demons, knows, the, the demons know the believer who has authority. And they know those who are fearful. They don't joke with those who, who have... When a believer knows what is God, and he knows how to exercise it, hell fears you. They don't mess around with you because they know that you know who you are in Christ. They know that if they mess with you, you will put them to run. Are you understanding what I'm saying? But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart that it's authority. Anytime you think about prayer, think about access, and think about authority. Now let's talk about the motive. Why? In the sense, in the context of spiritual growth, there, there are a lot of things I can talk about, but let me mention a few. Why should we pray? I want you to write it down. One, because if, you, if you're going to progress spiritually, you need to pray. You cannot grow without prayer. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my wife abide in you, there's a connection that needs to be made. Then you'll bear much fruit. Matthew 22. Uh, Jude, Jude, sorry. I'll come to Matthew in a bit. Jude 20. He said, but you, beloved, building up yourself, your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. 
How do you build yourself up? Pray in the Holy Spirit. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Build yourself up. When I pray, I am building myself up. Sometimes I just go to pray and I have no agenda. Oh, somebody did not hear me. I don't need an agenda or prayer points to talk to God. Sometimes I just wake up and I'm just praying. What are you doing? I'm building up myself. You see, some of you don't understand some spiritual principles. You say, Pastor, why do I fast and pray? Everything is all right. Let me tell you. Countries don't wait till there is war before they stockpile. If you're a smart believer, you stockpile for the day of evil. If you ask me right now, God has been good to me. I don't have problems. Why am I fasting for 40 days? The Bible said the evil day will come. United States of America have no, uh, is not fighting anybody. But they are stockpiling. Because one day, either they will fight somebody or somebody will fight them. When I'm fasting and prayer and praying, I don't need a problem to fast and pray. I need to stockpile because a day is coming, a time is coming when I need to connect to my arsenal and need to tell the enemy, you are messing with the wrong person. In the name of Jesus, you don't wait till you are going through something before you fast and pray. You got to stockpile. Jesus Christ started his ministry with a 40-day fast. He didn't have any problem. He was stuck piling. And the Bible said the enemy attacked him at the end of his fast. Not drawing his fast. Can you imagine if he wasn't ready? By the time the tempter came to him, he had a stockpile of weapons and arsenal and surface to air missiles. He was ready and he said, that says the Lord. It is written. It is written. It is written. Why? Because he was ready. Some of you, you panic. Hey, pastor, help me. I'm in trouble. Stockpile. It grieves my heart when the whole church is praying and fasting. Some people are just eating. It grieves my heart. And I'll tell you why. Sometimes I wonder why. Today, let me give you Matthew 22. Jesus made a statement in response to the Pharisees about a question which applies also to prayer. Jesus said, you mistake. Your mistake is that you don't know the scriptures. And you don't know the power of God. If you don't fast and pray, child of God, you are making a mistake. It's because you don't understand what the Bible says. And moreover, you don't understand the power of God. Because if you do, the problem with people in North America is that we don't understand what prayer can do. Because if we do, we will not make that mistake. Ha! Ah. If you know the situation that can change, that I can stand here in Vancouver and change situation in Timbuktu, if you understand that. I'm talking about prayer. Somebody sent me a Facebook message this morning and said, Pastor, we were listening, we were listening to your message or somewhere on Facebook, and you made a prayer, and I received that prayer, and my sister was immediately healed. I wasn't praying for her sister. I was praying for somebody at Calvary. But somebody decided that prayer is a good prayer. And I received that prayer. And my sister got healed with you praying. Sometimes we could be praying for depression. And you may have anxiety. But you can take that prayer and say, God, I don't have depression, but I have anxiety. I receive that prayer in Jesus' name. No, no, some of you don't understand. When you understand what prayer can do. Prayer can do for you one day what you can do for yourself in 20 years. Somebody has been sick for 40 years. One prayer, Lord help me change 40 years of situation. You don't understand scriptures nor the power of God. That's why we don't pray. Because when you do, you don't make that mistake. 
Even when you don't have a prayer topic, you are praying. Because you are stockpiling, you might need it. Because many of us, when the enemy attacks us, we are not ready. That is not when you say, devil, wait, I'm going to fast and pray and I will deal with you. It's too late. It's too late. What prayer can do? Prayer can bring purity. Hmm. Let me tell you, the more you pray, the more you hate sin and iniquity. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You say, Pastor, how does that happen? When you, you, are, when you are in prayer, prayer creates an appetite for righteousness. Those of you at the back, why are you so quiet? Are, are, are you all right? Please, those of you in front, look at the people at the back and say, are you all right? Look, look at them. Say, are you all right? You're too quiet. Are you all right? It changes your taste for God. Do you realize that when you are praying, I can tell you for myself, I spend about an hour, an hour and a half every day watching television and some nonsense. As we enter 40 days, the remote does not even attract me. I'm telling you, I've not watched it. It doesn't attract, I see it. I pass by the TV all the time. It doesn't, they, I don't have appetite to watch TV. Because my spirit has been lifted to something sweet. When I come to prayer in the evening and I go home, I just want to stay in the presence of God. Just play some worship song and just stay under the anointing. I have no time for Netflix because my spirit has been quickened. Oh, did I say Netflix? Somebody say, Pastor Sam, have you watched the season five? I have watched the season in heaven. And I can tell you, hey! I don't know what season you are talking about. But the season I am in is better than Netflix. Because when I connect with heaven, something begins to change. Get off the Netflix and pray. Come to prayer meeting. It's only an hour. Shut off the TV. Come home from work. Take a quick shower. Say, I'm heading to church. That one hour with God can change something in my life. Changes. The Bible says in Acts chapter 3, Peter and John, they were going to a prayer meeting. Oh, these are leaders of the church. They were on their way to a prayer meeting. And you think you are better than Peter and John? The shadow of Peter will raise, heal the sick. He will raise the dead. And he was in his way to a prayer meeting. Some of us, we think we are too big for a prayer meeting. You are mistaken and you are in error. Because you don't understand. It's not because Peter needed God. In fact, on their way to the prayer meeting, they raised a crippled man. If there's anybody who could say, I don't need a prayer meeting. Before they entered the prayer, there was so much power that they healed this man at the door to the prayer meeting. And yet, they were going to the prayer meeting. I pray that Calvary Worship Center, we will never come to a place where we say that we have enough prayer. We don't have enough prayer. The Bible says men always have to pray. Men always have to pray. And not to give up. Pray, always the Bible say. Pray without ceasing. Pray. When you begin to pray, there are some places you will not go anymore. It doesn't feel attractive anymore. Because the Holy Spirit begins to touch you when you come closer to God. Then... Your eyes upon Jesus. Give me the tune. In His wonderful face, and the things on earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory. Come on, sing it again. I am talking about prayer. Turn your eyes. Come on now. Your eyes upon Jesus. 
Come on, can I get a witness? Look on. Look on and it's wonderful. Come on now, come on now, come on now, come on now, come on now. Jesus, come on now. And, and the things of the songwriter saying he said the more you come to the presence of God and to the glory of God all of a sudden things no more attract you places that you used to go no more attracts you Are you do you know what I'm talking about something is changing setting music no more attracts you All of a sudden, you are no more listening to Kiss FM. You are listening to Praise 106.5. Oh, can I talk to somebody? You see, when your spirit is dying, then you are attracted to the things of the earth, to material things. But when your spirit becomes alive, all of a sudden, God opens your eyes to true and the lasting things. I know what I'm talking about. When you find yourself watching too much television or too much Netflix, and there's nothing wrong about that, I do you know that your spirit is dying. Oh, did I say that? Or oh, can I say it again? When you find yourself watching too much television and too much Netflix, because let me tell you, when the devil met Jesus, and now listen to this revelation, I hope you don't forget, and hide it in your spirit. The Bible says he showed him all the things of the world and its splendor. There's a lot of distraction happening in your life. The devil is giving you everything. Give you the iPhone. Give you fake book. Oh, did I say fake book? Oh, no. I, I mean Facebook. He gives you all kinds of things to distract you. He showed him all the kingdoms. You can watch this. You can watch that. You have unlimited access to internet. You have everything that you need. Why pray? Our generation, we are in trouble. There's so much distraction. Very soon you have internet, Wi-Fi everywhere. If you don't learn to put that phone down, that tablet down, those distractions away, you're going to die spiritually. There comes a time when you say, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of the Lord. Am I saying something to somebody? Sorry if I'm rocking your boat. This is the word of the Lord. There are distractions. And sometimes you need to put those distractions aside. And focus on God as a priority. Your heart will change. When Isaiah saw God, something changed. Isaiah chapter 6. The Bible says, and the post of the door was shaken by the voice of him who cried out, and the house was filled. This is somebody who has an encounter with God face to face. And he said, and he said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. All of a sudden, the reality of sin and iniquity begin to confront him. That is what I'm talking about. When you come close to God and experience him in prayer, all of a sudden sin becomes sin. You become broken. You become confused. Why am I doing these things? Why, why am I eating this rubbish? The Bible says you will come to yourself. You will wake up. Your spirit will be quickened and say, why am I eating this junk? Why am I living this lifestyle? Why am I following this path that is ruining and destroying me? When you come to the presence of God, the reality of sin becomes become real to you. And I dwell in the midst of people of uncleanness, for my eyes have seen the king, the Lord. For woe is me when he saw the glory of God. Prayer will do that. Prayer will produce perseverance. It will give you the battery, the energy that you need to go on and not die spiritually. I was telling you the other day about Isaiah. Let me read it again. I love it. He gives power to the weak. To those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. How does God give strength? Those who wait 
shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like the eagle. I might go into the prayer room like a cat, but I'll come out like a lion. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk. Prayer will produce perseverance. Many of us, we die. Remember yesterday, last Sunday, when we talked about what kills your growth? Weariness. But when you pray, you get extra strength to continue. Prayer also will give you perception. Say, Pastor, what is perception? Listen to me. It will activate your spiritual senses. When you pray, your spiritual senses become alive. You can sense things. When something is coming against you, you can tell. When the Holy Spirit is in a place, you can tell. When somebody comes to you with a wrong spirit, you can tell. When God is speaking, you can tell. When you are going into trouble, you can tell. Because God is in a realm of trying to talk to us. But many times, our activation is off. But prayer will activate. All of a sudden, you begin to sense things. Kalibo tarababaya katarabaya. Your son shall be okay. The children are all right. Because I should tell you. Just rest in him. Do you hear what I'm saying? You shall hear in the hearing of your ear. This is the way. Walk in it. Many times we bring unnecessary troubles and pain because we are not activated. It's not that God is not speaking. Our antenna is off. Prayer will make your antenna alive. Even if you are, your wife is attacking you, you can tell where that spirit is coming from. You can look at her and say, honey, what is this? I don't like this. I don't, I don't like the smell of this. I think we should stop and pray. Spiritually sensitive. When the enemy is trying to mess up with your family, you can tell because you are activated. Jesus could look at Peter and say, Peter, Satan, get behind me. What you are saying, I know the source. I sense the source where this is coming from. Some, sometimes things come against you. It may be the natural, maybe in the flesh. Sometimes it is spiritual. And as a child of God, when your spirit is activated, the Bible calls it discernment of spirit. You must be able to say where it is self, whether it is Satan or it is the Holy Spirit. As a child of God, you must be able to differentiate what is happening around you at, at, at a particular time. I hope somebody is catching this because you need it. Jesus Christ in his, in his ministry, sometimes in the midst of preaching, he will stop and say, Father, I glorify you. And the Bible said, God will respond and said, I have glorified it and I will glorify your name again. And the Bible says, they that are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. Be led by the Spirit. How do you do that? Quicken your spirit so that your spirit can catch heaven when heaven speaks to you. Is this in too much for you? I'm talking about perception, prayer. The enemy will set traps for you. And when you have spiritual sensitivity, you can tell this is a trap. God said, don't follow him. Don't follow her. That's a trap. Don't sign that deal. You will go into bankruptcy. The Bible said there is a way that seems right unto man. But the end thereof is death. Sometimes when you have sensitivity, you don't go to certain places and do certain deals. Because you are sensitive. He said, I, I don't know. I can't. My spirit is not at rest with this. There is a restlessness in my spirit.
One time, Paul and Silas were going somewhere, Acts chapter 16. And the Bible said there was this girl that was following them. But she was saying the right things. She said, this is a man of God. Listen to him. This man has a word. Listen to him. What she was saying was right. But the spirit behind it was off. And as a child of God, you must be able to tell. And the Bible says, Paul began to feel some restlessness in his spirit. What she is saying is right. But it's coming from the pit of hell. And commanded that familiar spirit to lift that girl in Jesus' name. Oh, yes. Child of God, stop drinking milk and let's get into some meat. I want you to grow in the things of the spirit. It will save you a lot of headache. It will help you on your journey to God. Don't just come to church on a Sunday. For most of you or for some of you, that's all that you can give to God. Show up on a Sunday and the rest of the week do my own thing. I pray that today you change that attitude to grow. I want you to grow. Ah, prayer will give you protection. Mm. And I've only spoken about that. Ephesians chapter 6. You take on the whole armor of God. And you walk every morning as you pray, you surround yourself by the armor. When you pray, you apply the blood of Jesus over you. When you pray, the fire of the Holy Spirit begins to surround you. The enemy can touch you. Oh, can I give you one more? I'm talking about the power of prayer. The motive why we must pray. Provisions. God will provide. The Bible says, ask, seek, and knock. And the door shall be opened for you. God will not give you a snake when you ask for fish. He will answer you. He said, call upon me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things. Thank you, Jesus. Let's deal with the last one. I've talked to you about the meaning, the motive, the reason why you must pray. Let's look at the method. How do we do it? How do we do it? How do we do it? Let me talk to some new believers in this room, young Christians. How do we do it? Say, Pastor, yes, I love to pray. I'll give you a simple step that I find has helped my life over the years. You'll find in Mark chapter 1, verse 35. Start to practice Mark 1, 35. And I'll break it just in a moment before we close. The Bible says, and in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out. Somebody say he went out. And departed into a solitary place and there pray. This is a very powerful scripture. This verse changed my life many years ago. And you can practice it. Say, Pastor, how do I do it? Number one, this verse mentions priority. If you are going to become a warrior, if you are going to make prayer powerful in your life, to activate prayer, you got to make it a priority. And that's exactly what Jesus did. Let's go back to the verse. Let me break it. In the morning, rising up a great while before day. Why? Because that's a priority for Jesus. In fact, brothers and sisters, when you study chapter 1, it will blow your mind. If you know that what happened in the day before this morning, you have no excuse not to wake up early to pray. Before Christ woke up, let me tell you what his previous day looked like. He went out and called disciples to follow him. Then he went to the synagogue and he went to preach. Then the Bible said when he was coming out of the synagogue, he was met with a man possessed with demon and he did some deliverance. From there he was told that Simon's mother-in-law was sick, went to the house and prayed. By this time it was evening. Let's go back, pick it from there. 
verse 32, in the Bible it says, at evening, having done all this, when the sun has set, they brought to him all who were sick and those who were demon possessed. And the whole city was gathered together at the door. Then he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. This is how his evening ended. And he did not allow demons to speak because they knew him. Now in the morning, in the morning, having risen along before daylight, he went up to pray. What is your excuse? What is your excuse why you can't get up in the morning? If I told you you will lose 40 pounds in 40 days, some of you will get up at 4 a.m. and go to the gym every day just to leave, just to lay down some flesh that will one day die anyway. What about your spirit that lives forever? If you wake up early in the morning to go to the gym, and you can't do the same for prayer. Repent today. Say, God, forgive me. I've got my priorities wrong. By all means, work out. By all means, go on the treadmill. And I do. By all means, pump some iron. By all means. But that's not your, your number one assignment. Before you pump the iron, make sure that you pump with Jesus. Ha 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 ha. Manta rapapa. Go on the treadmill in the Holy Ghost. Mi anda bota rapapaya. Mata bo baba. Ho 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 ho. Mi keta be 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 be. You are developing spiritual muscles. Proud. Way before day he woke up. And that's what some of you must do beginning tomorrow morning. If you need to grow. Number two, we find that also he found a place. I'm talking to you about principles of prayer. How do you do this? Make it a priority and find your own space. Go back to the verse, please. Verse 35. In the morning, rising up great while before day. That's a priority. He went out and departed into a solitary place. Find your space. It could be your basement. It could be your washroom. I remember when we first came here. All that we could afford is one bedroom. And, and, and I had kids. The only place I could pray was the washroom. That was my space. Oh, I tell you, God was there. But before I get in there, I will announce to everybody, if you need to use the washroom, this is the time. Because when I get in there, no more washroom door is going to be open for you. I announce it three times. And once it is finished, once I enter in there, I meet with God. What is your space? Find your space. Every morning, find a space. Build your altar where I come to meet God. Get out from bed and find your space. In fact, Jesus describes it this way in Matthew chapter 6. He said, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. Find your space. And when you pray, shut the door, pray to the Father, which is in secret. Find your space. I went to Tony's house, and he showed me his space. Beautiful. He said, Pastor, this is my chapel. Nobody comes in here except to meet with God. I went home and I created my own chapel too. Some of you have spare bedrooms. Change it into a chapel. He said, this place is a holy ground. If you need some place to pray, this is where we pray. Some of you may be under your bed. By all means, go under your bed. Some of you may be your kitchen sink. Enter your kitchen sink. You may not have space in your house. Like Jesus, get out. This is Vancouver. There are a lot of green spaces. Go somewhere, go to the park and start praying. When you see people coming, just shut up before they think you are, you are crazy. I do that all the time. I was in Tinehead the other day and I, I forgot myself. I was just praying, I was just praying. And I met this group of people, it was too late. They look at me like that. They keep looking at me. And I said in my head, you don't know what I'm going through. Just move on, move on, move on, move on. Move on, move on. Don't call the cops on me, I'm just fine. I am just fine. Have you ever met a crazy woman praying? 
Sister Christine, they may think that you, you may need to go into the psych ward. No, this is not a psych ward, mother. I'm like the widow in Luke. I am crazy for Jesus. I am knocking and banking on the law because I need justice. My husband has left me with nothing and I need justice. I'm talking about the diary of a crazy woman. Car! Close it and pray. Priority. And then the third thing the Bible says he did. He didn't go to the space to sleep. You know, sometimes you can go to your space and go and sleep. Some people have got a special anointing. See, my wife, she has got anointed. My wife could stay in bed and pray for hours. I don't have that anointing. It is not my grace. It is not my calling. So whenever she said, let's pray, I said, not in bed. I can't do it like you. I need to get out. I can't even sit or kneel. I need to walk around. That is my anointing. That is my grace. You ask me to sit down, I will start snoring. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to wake up early in the morning. Find my space and sleep. That's a waste of time. I need to get there and pray. How do I do that? When you get there to pray, now listen to me, all you young believers. When you get there, how do you pray? Let me give you some, something quick to pray about, and I will finish. Use the acronym ACTS. And many of you have been through our new believers classes. You know about this. ACTS. Remember that. How do I pray? ACTS. Jesus taught us to pray and it's fulfilled. ACTS. He taught his disciples how to pray. Number one, A stands for adoration. So when you pray, pray like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Start with worship. If you can't worship, you've got a terrible voice, put on a CD or MP3 or something. Go on YouTube. Let the music play, uh, play and they soak in it and just worship him. There are wonderful songs out there. Let them play. Create your own worship team from YouTube and soak in it for a few minutes. Just worship. Jesus taught us to pray. The system for confession. Forgive us our trespasses. Pray that God will cleanse you and wash you from your iniquities. Because you can't come approach I have access to the presence of God with sin. So the next thing after you've worshipped is ask God to forgive you. The T stands for thanksgiving. Begin to thank God. Let God know that you are grateful. You are grateful for every penny. You are grateful for that job. You are grateful for Canada. You are grateful for your wife, your spouses. You are grateful for your children. You are grateful for whatever God brings you for her. Father, I'm not on medication. Father, I am on medication, but you are keeping me alive. This medication is supposed to bring side effects. I'm not getting side effects. Thank you. There are millions of things you can thank God for. Even if you can't remember it, thank God for the things you cannot see. For every one answered prayer, there are millions of prayers God has answered that you don't even know. The earth stands for supplication. This is where you begin to intercede and pray and ask God for yourself. Ask God for your neighbors. Ask God for prayer requests for others. Begin to pray for the salvation of the world. Begin to pray for your job. Begin to pray for your husband. This is where you do. Just start, start with this. I'm telling you, it will take you minimum 15, 20 minutes to go through Acts. Let's begin that. Practice this for six weeks and come back to me and tell me the difference. It will change your life. Priority, place, and prayer. Mark 1.35. Let's bow our heads down. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I have delivered your word as you gave me. Now the rest is yours, Holy Spirit. Begin to, oh God, take this word and plant it and cause it to remain in our spirit. Father, you are causing us to go beyond where you are. Wherever you are in your prayer life, I believe and I challenge you today, you can go further. There are more about God that you are not exploring. There are more things God wants to do in your life. The Bible says you receive not because you ask not. Oh God, teach us to pray. Can you make that prayer? Say, Lord, teach me to pray. Teach me to pray. Father, take my prayer to the next level. 
Father, I am in grade one. I want to be in grade two. I am in grade two. I want to be in grade ten. Father, help me. Help me move from where I am to another level in my prayer life. Begin to pray. I want to give you a second. Everybody, talk to God about where you are with your prayer. I am not satisfied where I am. That is why I want to come here every day and pray and pray some more. I need every prayer I can get. I want to stockpile. I want God to take me again and again farther than where I am. Deeper than where I, than where I am. Higher than where I am right now in the name of Jesus. Are you praying? Are you praying? Talk to him. I don't want the devil to steal this word from your heart. Every word that God has spoken to you today that you are like, mm, remind God about it again. Say, God, I need to make some changes beginning tomorrow morning because I want to grow. For, for some of us, all the prayer we have is a prayer we pray in the sky train, the prayer we pray in the washroom. That must change. You need to find a better space, a better time, and a priority. Some of it may mean you, you have to start going to bed on time so that you can get early in the morning and do what God wants you to do. Make that choice right now, that decision right now. I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to make a decision right now, right now, right now, right now. I want to grow. I'm going to step aside for 20 seconds and wrestle with God right now. We are talking about prayer.